Alright folks, at the end of chapter 5, um, you should be able to move around on your screen. You should be able to hit play. And your guy should be able to move. But there's no animation, like nothing's changing when he's walking and stuff. So that's what we're going to fix this time. So now we'll get into chapter 6, uh, the animation part. Alright, I don't know how you're doing it, but again, I'm kind of saving these. So if I go to my save games, there's chapter 6 start. So I'm going to make a copy of that. And then I'm going to launch the copy. And I'll call it uh, Chapter 6 Test. Now, assuming everything works right. Oh, I got to open host. All right, now. Assuming everything works right, you'll start seeing animations in your game. So now, like when my guy's standing there, I got him to set, I set him to twitch. So that's his idle. And when he moves, you can kind of see now his legs are going to move. Uh, I still haven't added a jump animation yet, and um, I have the whole map done. Now you're going to get errors from these coin boxes and stuff because we haven't programmed the A those yet, uh, and these ladders aren't correct either. Uh, and he still sticks to uh, some objects. And he doesn't die. So we'll get into all that again as we go through the book. But uh, let me see, show you what the end looks like real quick. Wait for it. And there's the castle. And apparently he sticks to the castle. Alright, so you get the idea. Alright, so you're going to open Unity and you're going to go to the Chapter 6 Start, the one you, the copy you just made. And I, I called mine Chapter 6 Test. And File, Open Scene, if it doesn't open already and test level. And then that's where you should be. Uh, remember I left off, I had only done that far and my guy can move and he's still double jumping sometimes which is, we'll figure that out eventually. Alright, so the first thing you're going to always do, remember each week, is we're going to import the assets. So I'm going to go to my asset folder, right click, import package, custom, and then I'm going to go to my stuff where is 2D game files, project files, and chapter 6 start. And I'm going to import all that stuff. Now, once the import's done, you're going to see all kinds of weird stuff. Um, I got issues with player with uh, player controller already. If you go to your scenes folder, you get a new scene now. So right now I'm in. Uh, let's grab that. So right now I'm in test level. Uh, let's look at first level. So if I do file open scene first level, here's the one that I was just showing you. Ah. So I can't even can't even play it because uh, the script has errors in it. But this is the one that's filled. This is the one that I just showed you. So at this point, just so everybody's like together, um, I want you to get rid of the test level so that you only have this level. That way, everybody's level is the same. And as we progress through and we work on the boxes and things like that, you can always go back to your own level and work on it if you'd like. Now you'll see if I go to scripts. Um, it loaded another player controller. So I have player controller and player controller one. Remember, anytime it adds the second of anything, uh, it calls it you know number one, number two, number three, kind of like that. So we can get rid of that. Delete. File. Oh, where's that freaking? Just die, die, kill it. Okay, there it goes. All right, and now let me see if I can actually still move in the game. And I can't because my script's not working. Now, all these reference behaviors missing, if you double-click uh, these error messages, they'll show you. So the coin boxes haven't been fixed yet. So there are 70 of those coin boxes around there, and there's actually some other things that, that aren't working in the game, um, like the, the coin boxes, the ladder. Uh, there's something also wrong with it. Uh, one of these double-clicks goes to a camera. 
Um, so don't worry about those. All right, your book starts talking off about some animation principles, uh, anticipation, appeal, uh, arcs, exaggeration. Make sure you check those out because some of those will be good test questions. Then it talks about 2D versus 3D animation. With 3D animation, we typically have what they call transform um, animation, and that's where we move the individual parts. You know, if it's a ball, we just move the ball to different locations. So it's all a matter of changing the transform positions uh, in order to get the animation to work. But with 2D, we typically use frame animation, where each frame, or every couple frames, we pop in a, a whole new sprite, uh, and first his legs are closed, and his legs are open a little bit, then his legs are open a little bit more, so then it looks like he's walking. All right, I'm going to turn that off. Okay. All right, then they talk about um, other ways to do animation. Um, you can import animations from other programs. Um, you can actually script your own animations, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, but again, why get complicated when you can do it much easier? So we're going we're gonna to work on the easiest way today. So on page 99, your book finally starts giving you some actual directions. And it says, you know, uh, from the projects folder of chapter 6, uh, number 2 says, in the scenes folder, so go to scenes. Remember, we have first level, then we had our test level that we deleted. And it says, open the first animation scene file. Well, there is no first animation. There's just first level. Um, and that's what we did. So if you just did file, open scene, went to scenes, first level, everything's good. Now, if you remember back a couple of chapters, it already had us add um, the animator and the um, animation components down here. But right now, just the animator is showing up. So we need to fix that. We need to add an animation component. Uh, and first, I'm going to move this up so it kind of looks like in the book, like at the bottom of page 99, um, it says transform sprite render then animation. So I'm going to move that up. And again, if you just click on the little gear and hit move up, um, you can move them right up. And now I need to add, and that's animate or, I need to add animation. So add miscellaneous animation. And then I want to move that baby up because we're going to be dealing with that a lot. And they have that at the top. Okay. So now we're all set. So at that point, page 99 is good. Then they talk about the animation components. You have animation, animations, play automatically, and what all this stuff, uh, what these things, what these components all do. And then they run you right into making an animation clip. And then that's where the book just goes bonkers and nothing works. If you follow the book from this point on, your stuff will not work. So at this point, the first thing I want you to do um, is go to page. Da, 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 da. Wait for it. Keep waiting. Go to page 112 and start there. And I want you to modify your script. You're going to go to your player controller file and starting on page 112 and going all the way to the top of page 115, um, you're going to add some new stuff to this. Now, I'm going to cheat and let me see if mine works in here. Uh, if you guys get lucky, I might add this to the folder this week. save. Remember, it doesn't take it until you save it. And let's see if I'm getting any uh, errors. Nope, I don't see any red errors. That's always a good sign. And I still can't move around. That's a bad sign. Oh, uh, remember, we need to go back to player. And if I go to script, there's no script attached. So I need to grab that and move it to there. And then all my different values pop up and I'm all set. Then, hopefully I can move. Yay, I can move in the game, and my jumping is way too high. All right, let me adjust that jump speed a little bit. All right, with the new script, it looks like my double jump is uh, still there. Yay! Uh, but apparently I can only double jump twice, which is nice. So now they put double jumping in there, uh, and you cannot triple jump. But again, I, I got no animation on my script, or my guy. So... Now, on this script that he gave us, at the very end on page 1, where was it, 115, I took out the, uh, the, the debugging stuff. 
Um, at the bottom of page 114 where it says try, I took out the word try. And the bottom of page, or top of page 115, I took out the catch, unity, exception, debug, error, log, all that stuff. Because um, there were some, I, when I went through this and typed it in, just as he said, um, I had issues. I also had to um, comment out this jump material. So I just put um, slash uh, asterisk in front of and material equals this jump material. Uh, and then I make sure the parenthesis was still in there. And then I had to do that down here because he never defined jump material. So I imagine we'll get that later on. But right now, if you if you unhide that or uncomment that out, your uh, script will will crash and you'll get a bunch of errors and you won't be able to run it. So it'd probably be a good idea for me to load that for you guys. But it's also good practice for you guys to go through this write the code up and then find those issues where you know where is the jump material at doesn't like jump material so I need to comment that out um, and to work on that again not how I say 99 but 90 percent of game design is solving problems um, and when it's time for you to design your own video game or go work for a company they're not going to be sitting there waiting to answer all your questions they're going to expect you to be able to solve some things on your own so I'll load that script in Angel um, but Make sure you try to run through that yourself and solve it yourself. And if you can't, then you can load the script in uh, automatically. Um, and if you really want to be a slacker, you can just load that and not even pay any attention. Uh, and then when you graduate and you have your degree and you can't make a game and you have problems and you feel that you suck and that your degree was wasted, you know that you kind of wasted it yourself. <laughs> but I digress. All right, so your script is all done. Um, your guy's back to moving. Yeah, I can move back and forth. Now we're going to work on the animation thing. So here's where we're going to deviate from the book tremendously. Um, now we're going to go to your assets, and we're going to right click, create new folder, and we're going to call this um, underscore animation. And when you do that, don't be like me, right click, new folder, underscore animations, all lowercase. And is there an S on the back of that? Yes. So now we have the animations folder. Now in the book, he has it. He has to do it two ways. In the animations folder, um, he then creates a new folder, and he calls that controllers. And then he has you create the animation controller inside there. Then he has you actually create the, the clips um, inside just animation. So animation has the clips, and then inside the controllers folder is the controller. Um, we're going to do that separately, and then you can move it back there later when we're done. So with animations folder selected, you're going to right click, and you're going to create a new animation controller. And you're going to call this player with a capital P. So that's our controller. That's going to be like the uh, the, the layout, the flowchart that says, hey, um, I can do this, and from here I can do this, and from here I can do that, um, or I can go back here. Uh, and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. And once you're done with that, then you're going to right click, and you're going to create. And now we're going to create an animation. So first we created the animator controller, then we're going to create an animation. And we're going to call this player idle. Player underscore idle. So now I have a controller and uh, an animation clip. All right, so once you have those two done, the first thing we want to do is we want to take our controller, duh, and we want to put it um, in the animator. So you see, animator has a slot for controller over here. So we want to grab player and drag it to the animator and put it under the controller and drop that. Alright, sorry about that. My cat came up and hit a bunch of keys and funked everything up, so I'm going to have to um, cut in this video with the next part. So that's why this transition here is kind of weird. Alright, so in the animation I want to create a controller, and I want to call this player, and I want to go to player, and I want to make sure that I add it here in the animator under controller. Make sure you get it under animator, and I want to move this up And then, where's animation at? That's so not cool. I'm 
miscellaneous animator animation All right, so I have an animator and I have animation and I'm gonna put animation at the top and then let me make sure I don't have any copies alright I good alright I can still move around yay okay good alright so we got our player he's attached to player let me clear this do I still have this crap coming on alright oh so I'm good so your book has you create um, two animations in one file. We're not going to do that though. We're going we're to do it a little bit different this time. So with that, he's attached to player. I'm going to double click player and I get uh, the controller. And the controller works like with these little blocks and you kind of link them to each other. Uh, and that's way, like if I can only swim, like if, if I can swim, um, or if I could be jumping and jump in and then start swimming, if I could walk in and start swimming, if I could fall in the water and start swimming, then I would do something like any state can go to swimming. But if I can only walk and then swim and I can't jump and swim, then I would go, I'd have a walking state and then a swimming state. So this is where you kind of like diagram all that stuff out. Now your book tells you to add a layer for damage. And we want to go back to the base layer because that's the one that we're, we're on. And let me check that real quick. Because it's very easy to get confused. Like once you add this base, you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to hold another layer. Uh, let me go back to this. All right, your book is not really clear. I'm on page 111. Uh, and I'm about half, well, a little bit more, less than halfway down where it says, you know, click the plus symbol to layers, um, add new animation layer, uh, call this new layer damage, leave the blending on override. Um, by default, the blending is on override, so we're good. Yeah, override. Um, but it doesn't tell me do I create the machine here in damage or in the base layer. So I'm going to assume it's base layer. Um, if it's not, we can always kind of move the stuff around. All right, and then from the base layer, we're going to go to parameters, and we're going to add four parameters. And these start at the bottom of page 111, and then flip over to page 112. So the first one's going to be a float, and we're going to call it speed. Now we're going to do two triggers. The first one's going to be jump and then damage and then we're going to do a boolean and that's going to be ground and, uh, page 112 yeah ground so I have speed it's a float and it's at zero and you'll see where the zero comes into play here in just a little bit then I have jump damage those are both triggers something has to trigger that either I hit the space bar or I take damage uh, and then ground am I on the ground true or false all right, so that's the controller. All right, now we're going to make our animations. So I'm going to go back here to animation folder, right click, create, and I'm going to do two separate ones, animation, and we're going to call this player underscore idle. And then I'm going to make another one, create animation player underscore walk. All right, and then I'm going to drag this one, idle, into the map. Now, whenever you're in here, these are the different states you can be in. Like right now, I can be, this is just a, like a transitional thing. This gets me out of the animation, um, and then entry is like when I first go into it. So when the game first starts, you're on entry, and the very first one that you create um, automatically goes, goes from entry into the first one. So being orange, orange means it's the default. So whenever the computer doesn't know what I'm do, what, I, what I'm supposed to be doing, um, the animation will play the idle. So idle will be the default animation, um, and it's listed in orange. And these arrows just show you, like, from the start of the game, I'll go right into the idle state. And then from idle, I can go into other states. Uh, and I can set conditions to go into these other states. So for idle, I click on player. And Oh, let me show you something real quick. If you click on player and then do window animation, notice I can't do anything in here. There's nothing I can do. I can click on anything over here, nothing works. You have to click on player and then click on animation. And then you should see the block you were working on, player idle. So player idle is there. And the sprite's showing up. So now I want to add the idle animation. So now down here I'm going to go to sprites, players, and they want you to add number 11. And again, I'm looking up here. It's easier to look up here to find the number on. Obviously, the numbers get cut off down here. 
So they want me to grab that and pop it in there. Now, when I first pop it in there, they want me to change this to 30. That way you can see stuff, and then I have no idea why I can't see anything. Uh, let me just delete that key. So I'm going to right or click on that, and then delete the key. And then I'm going to grab that guy, pop him there. And now he actually shows up. Now, if you want to see your animation, you can click on Game and hit play here under the animation tab. So when your guy's not doing anything, in this game he's just going to stand still because that's the way they want it. But in other games, your character obviously he continues to move even when he's idle. You know, he may just kind of breathe and kind of like go up and down, things like that. Um, but most games have an idle animation. This game does not. It just has the, the standard thing like this. All right, going back to the animator. Now, what your book says at this point is, then go here and create a new clip and make a second clip um, and call this one Player Walk. You can do that if you want. Um, I'm going to create a different one. And I drop that, and then I'm going to go back to Animations and grab Player Walk. And notice this one's brown or, or gray. Ah, I'm colorblind, look out! So now I'm going to try to affect this. I'm going to go to Player, Window, Animation. And remember, I don't want idle, I want character walk. Um, so now, whatever uh, options you have here, they should both show up here. So you can do it this way, the way I just did it, or you can do it kind of the way the book tells you, and you can just hit add clip and do that. However you want to do that. Now, for some reason, I'm going to go here and delete the key. Uh, and then I'm going to follow the book on page... I think it's 106. Yeah, 106. So near the bottom of 106 on step 7 where it says drag... Um, I'm going to change this to 30. And then each of these little slots, that's a frame, that's a frame, that's a frame, that's a frame. So they want you to go back here to sprites, player, um, and your player sprites. And they want you to start at player at number 8. So 8 is going to be the very first one. And then they want you to, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry, it was 9. They went 9 is the first one. So let me delete that key and then make, where's 9? 9. 9 is going to be the first one. And then they want you to go to 8. And he's 3 over, so 1, 2, 3. Uh, and then 7. He's 3 over, or 2 spaces between. And then they have you go to sprite 3. And then they have you go back to 8. Now again, if you want to see the animation, just drag this down, hit game, and hit play. And then you can see his little feet moving. Do, 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 do. Alright, go back to animator. So, now we have our two animations. We have a player idle animation, and we have a player walk animation. Now, I'm going to grab this and dock this here, uh, and that way I can kind of still see it. But now we're going to create transitions between the two states. So how do I go from idle to walking? I do that by going to idle, and I right-click and do make transition, and then I click on player. And that says, from idle, I can go into walking. And then I can click on this transition, and if you double click, uh, you'll see that now you get a condition. So it says condition's empty. I can hit plus. Anytime speed is greater than zero, I'm going to transfer from idle into the walking state. So if you just make the transition and then just double click the line, this will change and then it'll give you conditions. What's going to make me change? And then I'm going to go back here to walk and make click on walk. And I'm going to right click and make a transition from here. And saying from walk, I can go back to idle. And then I'm going to double click on that transition and say, hey, anytime my speed is less than one. So now we've told the computer, anytime my player's speed increases for above zero, put him in the walking animation. And any time his speed is less than 1, put him in the idle animation. So we're all set. We're like, yay! So theoretically at this point, all I have to do is go to player and go to the animation and grab the idle, remember the default one, and pop that in. And then I should be able to go to scene and game. And now my guys, whoop. and now you see his legs moving when he's going. So that's how, ooh, and now, uh, da, 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 now uh, apparently he stops. Oh, I know what we did. Hold on. Let me show you that. All right, I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to go to the transition. Oh, yeah. 
has exit time. That's what I didn't tell you about. So double click one of those transitions and turn that off. Exit time means it only plays as long as you have it set to play. So if my jump animation is three seconds long and I only jump for two seconds, he's still going to go through the jump thing for the last second even though he's not jumping anymore. Does that make sense? So if my running animation is 10 seconds long, but I only run for 5 seconds, it'll keep running for 5 more seconds. So the entire animation has to play, and once it's done, it's done. So you want to turn that off, and then go back to this one, and turn that off. And that will stop that, theoretically. So now if I go back to scene, game, now he should run the whole time. Come on, run more. What? Come on, do more. Alright, what's stopping you, buddy? Oh, we need to probably loop that, too. Hold on a sec. Turn the run thing off. Let's go back to these. Oh, we want to loop. And player and loop. So we want to make sure those are looping so they continuously run. And then hit play. <laughs> Alright, so now he's continuously running. And when I stop, he should not run. So remember, anytime his speed increases, um, at any frame, he's going to start with his animation. But then he'll stop because he'll pause because he's idle. So that's all there is to the animations. And you can add jump and other stuff. Uh, eventually, we're going to add take damage and some things like that. So that's animation in a nutshell. And remember, you can always go to um, websites. Oh, it's like holding a tiny fart. OpenGameArt.org, and they have tons of sprite sheets. So if I brow ah, browse 2D, there's a sprite sheet. Uh, tag. How about search? Sprite sheet. All right, planets, dudes. Uh, there were some really cool ones like where with ninjas and pause it for a second I'll find it you know here's one with an animated rabbit so here's the rabbit eating a carrot here's the rabbit jumping um, here's him jumping back down the hole or something here's apparently some poo somewhere here's one you know, with a whole bunch of different ninja stands so there's a walking there's a climbing there's his idol which is good there's him going back and left and right here's one with several sprites in different states and you can always do 2D sprite sheet and find images. Just make sure, obviously, you're not stealing somebody's work. Um, obviously, like like this guy here, that that's all the artwork. That's some of the artwork from Braid, um, which is a game obviously copyrighted. You won't be able to touch that. Um, here's a little weird baby dude, uh, Knight Yamato. He looks like a little baby to me, but I get digress. So a whole bunch of sprite sheets out. You can make all the animations you want now. Uh, you know how to make those work. Oh, I should turn that off. All right. Make sure you read the chapter. You know, it talks about the 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 controller uh, or the animator controller and how it's a state machine and how you go to, from different states. Uh, da, 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 working with the state machine, any states. Uh, and then it summarizes. Then the jump state will need the jump condition added to them. This is coming from both the idle and the walk. Blah. All right. On page 116, it looks like from your book um, they also added a uh, a player jump state uh, as well on that controller. But they never talked about it or said which of these sprites ah, goes in there. So I guess you're going to have to guess. So I guess when he jumps, oh, there's jump, but there's only one sheet there. So, oh, all right. <laughs> Doesn't this one look like a kind of, he's like butt hurt? <laughs> all right, I digress. So apparently jump, they just want you to do that. There's a duck. And really, that's kind of it. Um, you could always grab a couple of these and kind of put them together and make him jump. Like that one, and have that transition into that. Um, something like that. So you're going to have to build the jump animation yourself, and then make sure that you go into the controller. And add the jump, you know, right here. Just right click, create, um, animation. Call this one player jump. and then move this onto the screen and then make a transition from here to go there and then make a transition back 
and then make sure that you can go from idle to jump and then from jump to idle and then set the states now here remember jump has a trigger so you can go here and conditions empty add we're gonna add jump which is pretty self-explanatory and then here uh, we want to add no jump and I have no idea how to do that maybe I can just remove that so as long as I'm jumping that's the trigger um, I'll do player jump but if I'm not jumping I want to delete that no cut so and then if I'm not jumping I can go back to idle that's my guess alright so from here I want to add jump and from there I want to add nothing and then I want to go to my jump animation so player window uh, animation oh that's already there and player jumps now there and then we can add our jumps so sprites players um, I want to change this to 30 and I want to delete this key that's already there by default and I want to put him there I can't see it I always undock these things I like them bigger so I, can, I like to see my guys alright so he's gonna go there and is there any other ones that looks like he hurt his butt only mackerel where's another jump Is that the one I just did? Apparently so. Alright, where's the one I said it looks like he hurt his butt? And then we'll end with the jump. Alright, let's see what that looks like. So, oh, I, do I want to go game? Alright, that would look so much better if the player uh, was up here so I could actually see. Alright, now if I go to game. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you know what? Maybe everything's all already there. Let's um, delete, delete, and see what happens. Oh my gosh! Maybe I just need to jump. Uh, apparently not. Which one did I add next? I'm so confused. So anyway, screw around with this. Ah, nice. <laughs> and see if you can come up with a jump. If not, just just do one. Um, so that when he jumps, he does something like that differently. Uh, and then you're all set. All right, I'm gonna dock that again. Hey, dock that. Uh, need to undock that. All right, and then go back to scene, and you're all set. So make sure that your character controller is working there. So if I go to animations, that stuff is all done. And I go back to scene and hit play. Oh great, now I'm still, whoa, what the heck happened there? So apparently I need to work on that. So I'll leave that, I'll leave you guys like that. Um, you can fix the jump animation to however you want it. If you just want to have one animation in there or a couple of different animations, um, you can add that, now you know how. Um, and I'm, I'm imagining when we load the seven, uh, the chapter seven assets, um, that animation will be smoothed out and whatever it is that, that's holding that up, uh, will be fixed. So if it's not working, don't worry about it. Here, like I, I cut mine out already, and everything works. Like my idle, and there's my guy running. De -de 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 and so I'm I'm good there. Um, so just fix the jump, and you're all set. And I don't see anything else in your book. And make sure you read this chapter because you're going to get some questions out of here on your final exam. Uh, make sure you understand that orange is the default for the controller. Uh, make sure that you know that the player um, has to have the controller. And the the default animation, you know, in the correct places, uh, in order for that to work. All right, and if you want to get really tricky, you can actually just import other sprites into this. Um, like you can go to the asset store and grab some different a different sprite, like a ninja or a robot or something like that, and get rid of this little dorky dude, um, and add that. Because I mean, again, that's just a, a sprite. It's just a picture. You can add your own picture in there, um, and there's a lot better sprite sheets. Um, and you can actually have like Mario or somebody else in your game. So, and I'm okay with that. Uh, that'll be fine for the final project. Um, however you want to do it. So, again, if you have any questions, make sure you let me know. Other than that, 